Hello, David Hillier here and I'm going to be giving a short video on holding period returns. These are return measurements that are measured in a way which incorporates the time value of money or the compounding effect of reinvesting earnings that you've earned in, in past periods. It is different from the arithmetic return. Um, and I'm going to be spending a lot more time talking on the spreadsheet. The, I'll be covering chapter 9.2 of uh, my book, Corporate Finance, but the material that I'll be using is going to be separate material, different material. So without further ado, uh, looking at the, uh, the FTSE 100 index. Now, if you can look, you see here on the, the screen, um, I've got the FTSE 100 index measured at the same point in every year. Now you notice that the most recent data point I've got is uh, 1st of May 2014. The first data point I have is the 1st of May 1984. And I got this data from Yahoo Finance, um, from the UK Yahoo Finance. If you look at the the, the movement of um, the FTSE 100 over time, you can see that it is on an upward trajectory, so the returns will be positive, but there have been periods where the returns are actually negative. If you look at during the dot-com bubble, which is 1999-ish uh, through to 2002, uh, we have the global credit crunch, which is around about 2007 all the way down to 2009, just before 2009, uh, you can see quite clearly that there have been periods when the market's been going up and periods when the market's been going down. This is an issue that analysts have to face because if you're going to use historical data to, to predict what returns that you should have in the future, you have to be very careful about the period that you measure those returns over. If you go for too short a period, you'll be subject to sampling bias. Uh, and if you go for too long a period, then the data that you use in the early days, like the 1984s, all those, might not be truly reflective of the dynamics more recently. So an analyst has to be careful about the, the length of time that they use. I tend to use, if I'm using monthly data, 60 months of data. Uh, but if I'm using yearly data, then I'll I basically just use... Uh, a minimum of 12 years, but I would be looking at uh, around about 30 years, uh, really, uh, as a minimum. But the very, very, very mi minimum would be about 12 years. So I'm going to be working with the, this data, and I'm going to be calculating holding period returns, and I'll also be calculating arithmetic returns. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to calculate the return itself. So we'll, using uh, the spreadsheet, we have return. And you can't calculate a return for the very first observation because you're going to be using the, the observation from uh, before. I would uh, then use the second observation and use the formula P1 minus P0, close brackets, that's all in one bracket, divided by P0. And you can see here in my uh, spreadsheet we have P1 minus P0 divided by P0. And that is uh, 0.285, but if I then change this into uh, decimal points, uh, oh no, so I'll change it into percentages, you will see that the percentage is 28.6%. So that's saying that the FTSE 100 index went up by 28.6% in one year. Now I'm using data that's going from March to March, so... You might see data elsewhere, like for example in the book that's using data January to January. I'm just using the most up-to-date data. So I've copied down the formula all the way down through the years, and you can now look at the, this information in more detail. This was the very first uh, market crash. It was in October 1987. You can see what happened after that. Then we can look at the dot-com bubble busting, which is the period 2001 to 2003. And then you've got this really bad period, which was um, the global credit crunch. And this last period in 2012 was a sovereign debt crisis. So you can track the 
how the markets have moved and also the history, the recent history of uh, global business world uh, through the return series. Now, these are year yearly returns, and I want let's say that we want to ask the question: Well, okay, what's the um, the annual return? Uh, uh, not the annual return. What's the 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 ten year return? Now, one thing you could actually do is you say, well, for the ten year return, then uh, you can just add up the return. So it's twenty eight point six plus twenty two point oh seven, and you're just adding these uh, arithmetically. So it's sum of one, two, three, all the way up to ten returns, and you're then saying, well, okay, the the index moved from uh, its value uh, all the way up of 1,021, all the way up, doubled in size, and then actually went up by another 22%. And if you actually look at the the values here, um, you'll see that the we've moved from 1,021 1, to, where are we? Let's see, it's C12 to 2,970. Oh, and you might think, well, wait a minute. If we actually just took the, the actual return, then uh, the actual return would be, for the 10 years, it would be 29, uh, we'll actually use the formula, it's the 2970 minus the 1029, 1021 divided by the 1021. And you're giving a, a value of 1.9, but if we put that into percentage terms, then it's a 190%. So the arithmetic return, which you're just adding them, hasn't actually taken into account something. It hasn't taken into account the fact that uh, the returns in any one year will be reinvested the next year. And so we need to have a, a different methodology for, for looking at that. Now, the method that we use is holding period return. If we want to look at a return that, uh, will last you know, over a longer period, then we would use the holding period return. I'll just write this down so that you can see what I'm talking about. The holding period return. Now, the holding period return, uh, what it does is it, it compounds the returns. And so we have to have a, a slightly different uh, approach to this. What we'll do is we add 1 to each of the returns. So 1 plus... Point uh, two eight six zero, and we're going to be. I'm going to have to get rid of the. Yeah, here we go. So it's what one point two nine. Bring it down for ten observations. You can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And to get the holding period return, you multiply these returns together. Don't add them up. That's arithmetic. You multiply them. So I'm going to just do it step by step so it's just each cell multiplied by the others you can uh, see what I'm doing here I'm just multiplying them together now there is a, a formula in Excel that you can actually just multiply them in one function but uh, I'm just wanting to show you what I'm doing uh, in steps and we then, from that value, we then subtract 1 from it. Because we've added 1 to each of the returns, so we've multiplied all those 1 plus Rs, 1 plus Rs, 1 plus Rs, all the way through, and then we get to the final value, and then we subtract 1. And you'll see here that the return that we are getting from the holding period return is the exact same as simply just taking the, the end point, minus the beginning point, divided by the beginning point. And that is holding period returns. So when you're wanting to calculate returns for a longer period and find the overall return from your investment, then you should use holding period returns, not arithmetic returns. Thank you very much.